Hi guys, welcome back to Denise Diary. My name is Denise and I'm reporting live from my bedroom. <laughs> Yet again, another vlog in the bedroom. So you guys have asked me to talk about cultural differences and also how I am adapting. I'm going to say this, I'm going to be making this video into parts. So we're going to be having different parts to this topic as a whole because it's really broad and I don't know want to bore you guys with a lot of information, right? So let's jump right into the video. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the people here everyone here um so first of all canada is a multicultural country like people from different backgrounds origin literally anyone that you like anyone you can think of is here so um you would see like a greater percentage of people here very open-minded to visitors or new immigrants you know they're excited to have you here now you know how we are in nigeria like we're very care i mean open i mean free um at the same time there are a lot of things that we do not tell ourselves because i quote quote me and unquote me of superstitious things and all of that but here it's totally different like people ask you things that you think that are private so your colleagues for example can ask you hey hi what did you do for the weekend oh hey hi where are you going to those are the kind of things that i feel like should be private because coming from my background coming from where i am coming from you know you don't just divulge information like that but here they just you know they see that normal thing like why are you holding that information do you get what i'm saying so it took me a few weeks to know that oh that is how they are it's not like they are they want to be so you might not literally be private things to them so you have to be open-minded to you know relate to people also small talks are things they used to make conversations there are a lot of networking that happens here any small thing you think you, we're going to have a cup of coffee like that's that's on that thing that's on that thing that's they value their coffee time so coffee time is basically a time where they go you know talk or network or you know get to know someone better um at the first time at when i saw, first few weeks when i started working my some of my colleagues were trying to you know get me coffee i i just declined because i'm like she do you guys want to keep me with coffee too much coffee is not good for me <laughs> but i didn't know that okay they were just trying to bond with me they were just trying to um get to know me better so coffee time so when they say oh do you want a cup of coffee do you want to go get a cup of coffee they don't necessarily need you to get coffee they just want to have like 15 minutes talk 10 minutes talk with you just to know you better and, uh, and all of that so yeah people people really do 15 minute breaks here like coffee breaks is a lot here or like in nigeria like don't waste my time man i'm not going to be into what is cup of coffee like coffee in the hot weather why we have a coffee in the hot weather do you get what i mean so yeah so that's another thing i noticed there also um yeah so also aside from that there are also some cons i observed now yeah just like how we have a large percentage of people very open-minded to new immigrants new people coming to their country we also have a little bit tiny bit of percentage of people who are not as open-minded as you would think so i've had some people maybe out of curiosity or sincerely do not know ask me questions that are quite uncomfortable so i asked i had a, i was having a conversation with a colleague of mine and she went on to say oh that she's heard that nigeria is a beautiful city man she called my country it's city but it's okay let that pass <laughs> so nigeria is a beautiful city that she's heard a lot of things about it, the people and the elephants and they're like Ooh, what elephants so um based so when we continue talking i, I I got to find out that she doesn't really have a, a grounded knowledge about how Africa is as a continent and how the countries in Africa differ from each other. I would say I've not been to all the countries in Africa. However, you know, when people assume that Africa is a country, it offends me. It offends me a whole lot. So we have that percentage of people who are still ignorant about the fact that Africa, people from Africa, or yeah most people from africa that migrate or decide to relocate to a new country are not necessarily relocating because they live in the hot or they're relocating because you know their family is in danger or some sort of 
you know excuse and i'm not ignoring the fact that these things do not happen but i like it's just amazing to see that most of them think that that is why we migrate to other countries you know so that's that's another thing that i have observed what shocked me the most what shocked me most was the fact that people i, I found that people were not willing to research do their research on um information gathering i don't even understand what i mean so they would rather they would rather be satisfied on hearsay than go further to do their research now don't get me wrong i have an exception i have a colleague who is fantastic at that you give him an information today about where you're from it would go on to google and literally literally research and give you a feedback on his research that's like an exception that's like is an anomaly to the curve it's a big anomaly but a big a large percentage of people here base all of their all of the information they have on hearsay which is really sad to be honest aside from that people here are very warm are very friendly they welcome you with open arms and all and they ask like the most bizarre question i've had a question where someone has been like oh i don't mean to offend you but you know when someone says i don't mean to offend you it's totally going to be an offensive question i was like oh your english is good and i'm like dude the british colonized us <laughs> you know english is like our official language in nigeria my english has to be good do you understand what i'm saying so they, they 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 really do not know much about africa as a whole so i've taken it upon myself to educate the people that actually come up to me to educate them and you know we'll see how it goes from there so next thing i'm going to talk about is the transportation oh guys you already know the answer you already know what i'm going to say about this like there's nothing i want to see there's nothing i don't think there's anything i want to see you know the answer because he, okay so before i go for that transportation in each province they really do differ if i was to compare transportation in vancouver to or in british columbia to ontario is totally different i would say it is better here than how it is in ontario transportation here is available for people that stay in like you would think the most remote places transportation is available like a bus at least a bus comes steady and then we have what we call a sky train so let me give you a story then the first time i got on the sky train oh my god you can you can believe you can bet it with me that i was kabashing in my mind i was like hey god this train must not fall inside the water it must not fall because the, the train actually has a bridge that is over the water from one end to another end right from one city or town to another town so and then it takes about three minutes with a train three minutes to commute over that bridge right so yeah so most of the most of the um, train tracks and train routes are above land most of them we have some that are on the ground however as it's progresses or move forward or backwards you know moving above land above land so that's why we call it the sky train so yeah so i think it is only vancouver that or bc that has a sky train um train network here in canada so yeah that's another thing about um british columbia i haven't really been to plenty many places yeah. to be honest. another thing here that is prominent is hiking the mountains here uh, the mountains here are beautiful so i've heard so yeah hiking is one of the things that you should probably do when you come to bc also yes yeah, ziplining and some other adventurous things like everything here is very similar to how it is in the uk to be honest because bc looks like the uk however during the i mean ontario looks like america so if you really want to have the american feel you want to feel like oh i'm in america I'll jump, 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 jump. ontario is the place based on my observation ontario is the place but bc is more you know chilled reserved everyone is just up and up and about minding their business you know nobody's really downtown might be uppy uppy up people aside from downtown outside of it you know they're not they're not 
it's just there's no vibe there's no american vibe so when i was coming here i was coming with expectancy like i'm gonna have the american vibe <laughs> that didn't even happen but it's not good it's not it's not good it's not bad i'm glad that i'm here bc is said to have one of the best weather in canada however it snowed ridiculously for the past four days here in bc first time i will see snow as high as that in bc um canada is beautiful i'm and in my next vlog i'm going to talk about um work life i'm also going to talk about networking so yeah how it's different here and how it's how it differs from nigeria thank you for watching my vlog don't forget to like share subscribe and comment leave your comments i know you like the video but yeah welcome guys to my new service thank you guys for subscribing i really appreciate you guys okay guys i will talk to you later bye Okay guys, I would